Good morning. Good morning, Anthem. Hallelujah. How many of y'all excited to be here? Another Sunday that the Lord has blessed us to see. Hallelujah. We just invite you guys to worship with us, okay? Hallelujah. We're going to pray and just dive right in. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for who you are. We thank you because you are strong and you're mighty. We thank you because you are mighty in battle. Father God, we give you all the glory. We open up our hearts and we worship you. We open up our hearts and we give you glory. We open up our hearts and we bless your name. Father, we bless your holy name. Come on, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And there's all that's within me, bless his holy name. Father, you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy of all the honor, of all the praise. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. That name that is above all names. That name that is above all names. There is healing in your name, Jesus. So we call your name, Jesus. We call your name, Jesus. We bless your wonderful name. Come on, we bless your wonderful name because you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy, Father. And we give you all the praise and all the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Come on and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship.
to worship the Lord? Hallelujah. Come on, help us say this. We come to God by hand. Because it's all about you, Jesus. It's not about us, but it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. Yes, God, it's all about you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we say. 
42, 22nd chapter, the 16th verse, it says, And now why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away the sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Today we have one who is calling on the name of the Lord. We bring Miss Megan before you. Let's praise God for her. Hallelujah. Miss Megan is going to share her testimony with us. All right. I accepted Christ at an early age. Being a pastor's kid, I've been in church my whole life. I didn't learn how to have a personal relationship with God until I became a teenager and began, began attending youth camps through my church. I remember the moment I decided to follow him. As a teenager, I felt the power of the Holy Spirit and never looked back. As a child, I was scared of getting baptized. I was terrified of having my head underwater. As I got older, I didn't truly understand the meaning behind a water baptism. I can now say that I am ready to be baptized to publicly declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I have learned to put faith over fear and began living a purpose-filled life. A purpose-filled life, hallelujah. Faith over fear. That's a step we all need to take. Family, let's extend our hands and pray for Megan. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you that even when we're fearful, Father God, you told us that you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but that of love and a sound mind, Father God. And so today, we thank God for Megan's sound mind, Lord God. We thank you that she has publicly declared that you are the Lord of her life, Lord God. Father, we thank you for her footsteps. We thank you for leading and guiding her. We thank you for the new that she's going to experience. God, we love you, we honor you, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Family, let's continue in worship and turn your attention to the screen. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. We thank you because you are our help and you are our rescue. And we give you the praise and honor. Thank you, Jesus. My response 
you have done for us we dare not take it for granted even the little things father we owe you everything we owe you everything Jesus because you saved our souls you rescued us father and we thank you you rescued us only you could have done it father and we thank you we thank you Jesus we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We give you the glory and the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all are grateful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where are all the grateful people at? When you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, hallelujah, we appreciate you, Father. We appreciate your faithfulness. We appreciate your love and your mercy. God, we're so grateful. We're so grateful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are all excited to be here? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and take your seats and look at the screens. What's up, Anthem fam? I do want to take a second to speak to our junior high students that are in the room. And I know that you're in here because I see you. Now, if you are a junior high student, you are officially dismissed. Our Misfits Junior High Plus service is getting ready to start now. If you turn around, you should see somebody waving a sign. Follow that person and they will show you where to go. Now, for everybody else that's in the room, let's start over. What's up anthem fam it is so good that you are spending this moment with us thank you thank you thank you so much whether you are in the building you are catching us live online or you are watching us in replay land thank you so much for deciding to spend this time with us we truly 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 appreciate you now it is time for us to celebrate and when i say celebrate i mean get loud for some very special people that are in the house and that is our first time guest so let's get loud for our first time guest if this is your first time here you could have been anywhere but you decided to visit us here at anthem church and we are so excited to welcome you 
Now there is a favor that I need from you, okay? There's a seat back that is in front of you. You can do me a favor, fill it out, and meet us in the lobby in about 45 minutes. We just wanna love on you the anthem way. And just to say thank you for visiting us, we do have some free church merch for you. Now, if you prefer to be digital, that's cool because there's a QR code that is going to pop up on the screen. Scan that, fill it out from your smartphone, same thing. Meet us in the lobby in about 45 minutes. We're gonna love on you. And we have some cool church merch for you. All right, now, this is my favorite time, and guess what that is? That is offering time. So, the reason why we get so excited about offering here at Anthem is because it supports our mission. Our mission is simple, it's to lead people to know Christ and make Him known. And one way that we do that is through our offering. Not only does our offering help missions that are local, national, and across the globe, we are able to help people right in the 219 region and inside of our building. So, for our offering, there are two ways that you can give your gift. If you prefer to give online, you can visit our website at www.weareanthemchurch.com forward slash give. You can either set up a recurring gift or you can give one time. If you prefer to give in person, that's cool because there's envelopes on the seat back in front of you. You can fill that out, stuff it with your cash, check, money order, and on your way out, there are some offering containers. You can drop it in there and we will handle the rest. As you get your offering ready, I do have one announcement. It's one, but it's a pretty big one for you. March 31st, we are celebrating Easter and we cannot wait for you to celebrate it with us. It's Easter with Anthem that is happening. We're running it back at Morton High School this year. We have two services that we are just gonna celebrate Jesus in, in our 9 a.m. and our 11 a.m. So if you show up here in the building, you're gonna be a little disappointed because you're gonna have to drive another 13 minutes to Morton because that is where we will be, all right? So be sure that you take an invite or three or four when you're walking out of the building and pass it on to your friends, okay? Because our mission here, again, is to lead people to know Christ and make Him known. And what better way can you do that other than inviting them to our services, our Easter services at Morton High School? Remember, one invite can change a life, right? Now, hopefully that was enough time for you to get your offerings ready. Let's lift our prayers to him. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for the generosity of our Anthem family, Lord. I thank you for uh, blessing them to be able to give, Lord, towards our mission, Lord, to lead people to know you and make you known, Father. I pray that you bless these offerings, Lord, that you lay your supernatural hand on it, Father, and you multiply it in their lives, not just financially, Lord, but in every other aspect. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I am excited to announce, and hopefully you're as excited as I am, because I know you're going to get loud, for our anthem cousin is Pastor Tony Gilmore that is coming with part two of our current sermon series, God Said. Let's get loud for our anthem cousin, Pastor Tony Gilmore. What's up? Man, happy Sunday to everybody. So glad to be home again, because, you know, as a cousin... I get to visit Ham, uh, Hammond ever so often, and uh, man, I love, love, love being here. And I don't want to miss this opportunity to praise God. Can we praise God for the birth of Jackson? Come on! Jackson Hamstrong, welcome to the world! Man, our God is awesome! Our God is awesome. All I could think about when, as, as uh, Sam was putting the, the post out there about she's ready, and then the bird was like, God is faithful. Yes. He is, God is still making dreams come true. God is still producing miracles, and we get to be partakers of it. So, Sam and Taylor, if you're watching, we love you. We love you. We love you. Jackson, what's up? I know Daniel's in the house somewhere. The family has just gotten bigger. Man, I'm excited about this. So excited. Well, I'm excited to share God's word for you today. Uh, man, Christian just crushed it last week. I listened to it. Can we give it up for Christian? Such a great message last week. 
And as I was preparing uh, this message, uh, I think it, it really struck my heart last week, but then overnight while I was at the hotel uh, just getting ready, I think it was about 3 a.m., the Holy Spirit just woke me up, and, and this was the sense that I got, that this message is to help someone with a big decision that they're about to make, and he wants to stop you from making the wrong one. And, and when, I, when, I, when I felt that, it's like earlier in the week, God had made clear to me that I'm on assignment. But then this morning, he made clear to me what the assignment is. And the assignment is that someone in one of these services, and here's the deal. I don't care if it's one person. God is like, I've sent you on assignment to give them a word to help them make the decision that I want to make and not have to give birth to an Ishmael that they're going to have to feed. And so today, as we get ready to dive into God's word, the, the title of today's thought is, Did God Really Say? And I say that. Did God really say that? And if there was a subtitle, it's, discerning the voice of God in a noisy world. And in, in, I want to start us in the book of beginnings in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And I believe that we are going to take a, a look and do an autopsy on one of the worst decisions ever made. And as we look at this, uh, the Bible says... Now the serpent was more crafty than any. Let's stand to our feet for the reading of God's word. I almost uh, forgot that I'm so ready to dive into the message. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. God did not say that last part. And then Satan comes back with, you will not surely die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that there is a divine appointment today for someone to hear your voice so clear that it is unmistakable. Today, someone will have the tools and the ability to discern when it's you and when it's not you. And I believe, Satan, in the name of Jesus, we are canceling assignments in this place. That every scheme and every device and every trick that you've designed to destroy and distract God's people, we cancel it right now in yeah. Jesus' name, and we come with a laser focus to hear your voice, God. In yeah. Jesus' name, amen. amen, amen. You can be seated. Amen. So as I was preparing this uh, message, there are two books that, that jumped out at me. My wife and I, at the beginning of the year, decided to do a book club, and so we are doing, uh, we're reading a book, and every morning, I mean, every Monday, we kind of go through it together. The name of the book is called Frequency. It's by Robert Morris, and it's called Tune In and Hear God. And so when Pastor Sam said, hey, this is what we're going to be talking about, I'm like, man, this is in the pocket of what me and my wife have been studying. And then I pulled back out an old book from Bible College by Dallas Willard called Hearing God. And so just wanted to give you those as tools that could help you if you want to dive into this a little further. But there was this one quote that spoke to me. And it says, never let the noise of the world overpower the stillness of your soul. Yeah. And when I heard that, I was like, yes. Because real talk, we live in a noisy world. Yeah. Between streaming networks, social media, streaming music, video games, and my God, HGTV. <laughs> like, if I have to watch another episode of House Hunters, I'm just going to scream. And I'll tell you, because of those things, we really have very little time where we are not inundated with some type of noise. You know, your boy learned the trick a few years ago. This is be our 20th year of marriage, and I learned the trick probably like 10 years in, that when I go shopping with my wife, that the Spectrum TV app works on my phone. 
And so what ended up happening is she got a whole new husband, a whole new shopping partner. Because now I'm more patient, I'm more, you know, gentle when we do it because I can stream the game right where I'm at <laughs> while she's doing her thing. But here's the deal. We live in a place of noise. And the thing in our current day is there is noise on the outside, but there's always been noise on the inside. And the noise on the inside, it's like as soon as your feet hit the floor, there are voices coming to you trying to guide and distract your day, trying to keep you from living out the life that God has for you. And these voices sometimes are couched in hurt feelings, trying to win others' approval, the spirit of competition, unforgiveness, grudges, depression, and just sad feelings, social miscues, false guilt, shame, and just a feeling sometimes like the weight of the world is on your shoulder. And primarily every day, there are four voices that are coming at you. The voice of the world, the voice of the flesh, the voice of Satan, and the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you're a Christ follower, there are four voices coming at you every day single day. And so you think about four voices mix in our tendency to live in a noisy world. It's hard to hear God. Let me ask you a question. When is the last time you spent 30 minutes to an hour in total silence? No music, no TV, no people. Just total silence. Nothing. Because for some of us, that's unthinkable. Like, we got to have music playing in the background. We got to have something playing in the background. And here's the challenge. God has a prepared message for prepared people who prepare a place. And when we don't prepare a place to hear, it's hard to hear. And we always think, man, worship music, that's God's music. God can play worship music and create an atmosphere. But listen, sometimes words just get in the way. And you just need silence to discern and hear the voice of God. See, here's the truth. If you're like me, I don't question that God speaks. God speaks. My challenge is that I don't have as much confidence in my ability to hear and discern. His voice, man, I'll tell you the truth. I've gotten it right sometimes. There are some times I've heard God's voice and it's been like, yes, God, thank you. And there have been times I thought I heard God's voice and I'm like, no, that was bad pizza, man. From, from <laughs> That was just, wow, that was horrible. Who, who, I thought that was God and it just worked miserably. And what I've learned over the course of time is that for me to know when God is speaking, I have to be able to discern his voice. The word discern means to be able to judge between what's right and wrong, what's truth and error. And when we don't have mechanisms, when we don't have tools in place to discern God's voice, we put ourselves in position to miss it. I, I have found that there are these four questions that I've developed for me personally that help me discern when God is speaking. The first question I ask myself is, who is really speaking? I always ask that, and that's what I call revelation. The second question I ask is, what is he really saying? That's called interpretation. Yeah. Then the third one is, how can I really be sure? That's called confirmation. And then the fourth one is, what should I really do? That's application. And so let me unpack these for you because I believe today that this will give you the tools to better understand when you, to better understand and discern when God is speaking to you. And the first one is who is really talking? Because remember, we just talked about it. There are four different voices coming at you at any given time. I need to know who is actually speaking to me. Can I tell you this? Just because it's strong doesn't mean it can't be wrong. Because, like, we have these strong feelings of, oh, this has to be God because it's so strong. And, and I feel it so much. I, I feel it in my shanana, shandada, bobo, bebe. I feel it all. I pulled in all the tongues alphabet. And I feel it. But just because it feels strong 
doesn't mean it can't be wrong. And when we unpack this, this portion of scripture in Genesis chapter 1, verses 5, I mean, verse 5, we're looking at the, the mistake that Eve made was, it was so drastic. And here it is. It's like, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the garden? See, he's casting doubt into what God told her. And then the woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. See, this statement by her, the fact that she added something on means that she'd been looking at that tree. She'd been watching the tree, looking at the tree. And what I've noticed from this scripture, the Holy Spirit pointed out to me, is that not only was she looking at the tree, but Satan was looking at her look at the tree. He knew what God had said, and he's watching her, and he's like, oh, let me try and get her to partake of this tree. And so he comes back and he casts doubt in her mind because what Satan will do is sometimes he will give you a direct saying in opposition to what God said. But most of the time, he wants to cast doubt in your mind about what God is saying. And so he says, did God really say that? And this is what I noticed with Eve. She was navigating three voices. She navigated, it's the voice of God, don't eat the tree. The voice of Satan, eat the tree. And then the voice that was influenced by the world that she was around don't even touch the tree. And what I found in this is this is what Satan does to us. Satan has studied your tendencies and mine. He knows your proclivities. He knows the things about you that you, nobody else knows you struggle with A, B, or C. But he knows you struggle with A, B, and C because he has studied you since you were a child. And what he wants to do is he's trying to pull you away from what God has for you by planting thoughts and speaking things against what God wants for you. And here is the challenge. We have to learn to discern when it's him, when it's God, and when it's the world. Do you know that Satan can come as an angel of light? that he can, he can try to make himself sound like God. And the thing, in, it, it says it in 2 Corinthians 11, 13, and 14, that it says, no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So then it is the Holy Spirit that helps me discern between what is truth and what is a lie. John 16, 13 through 15. The spirit of truth will come and guide you in all truth. He will not speak his own words to you. He will speak what he hears, revealing to you the things to come and bringing glory to me. And then he says, the spirit, this is Jesus talking, the spirit has unlimited access to me, to all that I possess and know, just as everything the father has is mine. He said, that's the reason. I am confident he will care for my own and he will reveal the path to you. So it is the Holy Spirit that helps us to discern what is truth and what is a lie. And when we take the time to hear, we actually get to see or hear God's voice more clearly. But I'll tell you this, revelation isn't enough. Because once I get an idea that it may be God that's speaking to me, I need interpretation. I need to know what is he really saying? Because I hear what he says, but sometimes I don't hear what he says. And I'll tell you this. God can give you a word right now that he is not planning on bringing the past for the next 25 years. And what we end up doing is we just end up jumping out on words. God gave a word. Oh, God told me to do this. Then I'm going to do this. What we do most times is we jump from revelation to application without taking time for interpretation. And I'll tell you, what I've learned is this. Revelation without interpretation leads to frustration and sometimes humiliation. 
I just need to say that so it can sink in your soul. <laughs> Revelation without interpretation leads to frustration and sometimes humiliation. Because when God speaks to us, that doesn't really mean we know what he's saying. Here's the thing. There's a man, and he hears a word from God in a service like this. Holy Spirit speaks and says, I want you to join the film industry. And so he's like, oh, God gave me a vision to join the film industry. And so now he's like, baby, we loading up the truck, and we moving to California. <laughs> and so he quits his job. He takes his kids out of school, moves his family from Hammond, Indiana, to Los Angeles, California, because God gave him a word. And then he gets there, and he can't find a job in the industry. So he goes through all of their savings, finds a minimum wage job, and begins to work that job. His wife becomes frustrated with her financial situation, and she leaves him. So now she has left him. The kids are not talking to him. And as a matter of fact, he loses the minimum wage job and is now living on the streets of L.A., going from homeless shelter to homeless shelter. And he gets to this place where he is mad and angry at God because God was the one that told him he would join the film industry when God said, I told you that, but we weren't going to do it for another 10 years. And because you didn't slow down, Long enough to not just hear what I said, but know what I said. You have given birth to an Ishmael, and guess what? You're going to have to feed him. And we do it, don't we? But I heard from God. You did. But God has timing, and he has a process, and he has a place. And when we don't understand, then we're just like, but God, he did speak it, but he didn't tell you to do it now. And when we don't understand that interpretation of what God is saying is so important, we actually, I just thought of this when I was talking to, uh, um, talking to Christian. We actually live, end up living in the sea of consequences. And the consequences become so deep that we can't even see the promise anymore because we have to dig out of all the bad decisions that we made without the Holy Spirit being involved in them. I'll tell you a story. Years ago, I would say maybe 22 years ago, I was in my office. I was working. I was working a job, and I was in the cubicle, actually. And the Holy Spirit speaks to us different ways. He can speak through visions, dreams, inner witness through other people. He speaks to us in so many different ways. But that day, he gave me a vision. I was in my cubicle, and the Holy Spirit just fell on that cubicle. And I got up, and I walked away from my desk and went to a restroom stall, and I began to pray in the Spirit. And as I'm praying in the Spirit, he showed me these three things. He showed me my son Daniel with a suit on in a boardroom, which let me know that he was going to be successful because at that moment, he was walking through challenges. He showed me a series of buildings with a name on it, and I saw those as multi-sites that he had shown me. And then he showed me my wife, because at that point I was single. And I'm like, whoo! <laughs> he showed me my wife. And so there was a young lady that, that I was working with at the time, and it was her last day, and she was leaving. And I'd seen her and wanted to get her number, so we exchanged numbers. And it was after we exchanged numbers that God had given me the vision. So I'm like, oh, he showed me my wife. So we go out on a date the next night, and I'm like, he showed me my wife. So we we're sitting in the car at the end of the day, and I said, listen, I, I got to tell you something. This is going to sound crazy. Uh, yeah, I feel it. You feel it coming, don't you? <laughs> I, I just heard it all. <laughs> I said, God told me. <laughs> yeah. Woo! God told me that you are my wife. She looked over at me, and I don't, know if we, I don't know which one of us was the bigger fool. Because I told her that, and then she turned around and said, okay. And so I'm like, wow. So, well, you know, I, I plan it, and I propose, and, and I give her the ring. And then I introduce her to my, my dad and my brother. This is a real story. You can't buy this stuff on TV. And I'm, I'm introducing her to my, my dad, and, and he's like, Tony? Is she really? I said, Dad, God told me. 
Then I get with my pastor, and I tell my pastor everything that happened, and we're talking, and, and he's just looking strange. And I'm like, yeah, that's what happened when the Holy Ghost get involved, man. <laughs> it's just like miracle signs and wonders, player. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, we're talking. He's like, oh, okay. And he, he looked perplexed. He said, like, well, and his congratulations was a little weird. <laughs> But he said, congratulations. But then he called me three days later and told me to come back to his office. And he said, Tony, don't be afraid to say you missed it. And listen, I don't know why that hit me the way it hit me, but I already didn't have peace. And so when he said it, I was like, yeah, this ain't God. So I'm like, like a bad car deal. Let's unwind this thing. So I go to her. I wait about 48 hours because brother was scared. I went to her, and I said, listen, I was wrong. It wasn't God, and I'm sorry. And so she was upset. I actually had tears in her eyes. And, um, and I said, I'm so sorry. It was on a Sunday morning, I remember. And on my way to church, I stopped. And she was crying, and, and she said, but you said it was God. I said, I know, I'm, I'm sorry, I was wrong. But here's the deal, she wouldn't even give my ring back. I'm like, okay, I was wrong. Can I get my ring back so I can get my money back? Because I'm still within my 30 days, so I can still get a refund. She did not give my ring back. And I learned a valuable lesson that day. <laughs> Okay, maybe three valuable lessons that day. <laughs> but I learned something. Because two months later, God would actually show me my wife, Angie. And I thought about it. I got a revelation. But I didn't wait for the interpretation. And because I didn't wait for the interpretation... I jumped and birth, gave birth to a situation that caused not only me pain, but somebody else pain. Are you hearing me today? That we have to slow down to pause to hear what God is really saying. God may be telling you today to be a pastor, but he may not be telling you to go into full-time ministry and be a pastor. He may be telling you to be a shepherd of a crew. And walk in a pastoral anointing of shepherding, but not to go out and, and launch a, a full church. We got to pause and slow down to hear his voice. And then the next step before we go into application is getting confirmation. How can I really be sure? Because some people come from different camps. Some people come from the camp don't ask God for a confirmation. Some people call it a sign. Don't ask God for a sign. They say, because we have the Holy Spirit, that we don't need signs. Listen, my daddy knows me. He knows that I am impulsive, that I will jump out on something if I am not helped. He knows I need confirmation. And I will tell you this. I believe that God wants to give us confirmation because when your heart is to please him, He's, you, you're not asking it in a place of doubt or questions like, God, I just want to be sure. And when I'm making big decisions, when I'm making big decisions, I really need confirmation in my life. And so what I've learned is I've developed these filters that help me with confirming if God is speaking to me or not. You know, I have a podcast called The Unsuck Podcast. It's on Apple Podcasts and wherever you find it. And I started at the beginning of this year, and I have the software that I use from Buzzsprout. And so Buzzsprout has this application called Audio Sweetening. So Audio Sweetening, what it does is, because sometimes I film in crowded places, what Audio Sweetening does is it... It, it centers in on the voice that you want to come forward by identifying the voices that you don't. 
And so it identifies the wrong voices and actually removes those voices so that what comes through on the podcast is a clear voice of what you want heard. And these filters that I'm talking to you about today are filters that will help you crowd out or identify and remove the voice of the flesh, the voice of the world and the voice of the enemy. And the first filter that I have learned to use when I'm trying to discern if God is speaking to me is this first one. Is there a passage? Does it line up with the word of God? Because if it doesn't line up with the word, I can tell you flat-footed and bold, if it does not line up with the word of God, it is not God. I don't care how fine she is. I don't care how good it looks. If the Holy Spirit will never lead you where the Holy Scriptures have never directed you. So the Holy Spirit never contradicts the scriptures. That was help for me. But Jesus shows us where, how to do it right where Eve did it wrong. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. The Bible says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said, If you're the son of God, come on, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered him, "Mm -mm, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So Jesus teaches us a principle here that the enemy spoke something to Jesus and Jesus says, nah, that's not in the word. That's not the word of God. So because it's not the word of God, listen, when you have fasted 40 days, you are weak, you are vulnerable, you are susceptible. Remember, Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. So this is his 100% man in action, and the enemy is speaking to him because he has an indicator that, hey, if you're the son of God. So he knew who he was? Show us. And Jesus says, nah. That's not the word. It's not written. And what I've learned is that when I filter the thoughts or the voices through the word of God, I get to take some things off the table and say, that's not God. As a matter of fact, sometimes the Bible isn't direct as far as my decisions are concerned. So the Bible's not going to tell me who to marry or what job to take or what house to buy. But the Bible has principles that can guide me into my decisions. And so, you know, an easy one is dating. You find somebody, her or him, and oh, they're fine. They're fine. You have chemistry. You just click. You're like, this must be God. And then you go on a couple of dates, and you're like, oh, and they're so considerate and so kind, and they have a job with a 401K and (laughs) health insurance and investment portfolio. And it's like, oh, oh, and they drive a Jag. And it's like, this has to be God. But you failed to have the one conversation early enough before your emotions got involved. Hey. Where are you with Jesus? And you're like, but they they check off all of these other boxes. It must be God. And you're like, the Bible doesn't tell me I can't marry somebody with a Jag or a 401K or a good job. The Bible doesn't say that, but the Bible does give a principle. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And God didn't give that principle so that you don't end up with somebody who has a great future. He gave you that principle so that you don't have somebody that messes with your future in eternity. And he gives this principle so you're able to look and say, oh, I just got to say this because I feel like I feel it in my my shundai in the 1015. And don't missionary date. Don't date with the thought that, oh, well, I'm going to bring them to Jesus. And so, God, this has to be you. I'll bring them to Jesus. It's cool that you bring them to Jesus. That's all right. But listen, 
just because they came to Jesus, they still got a whole sanctification process to walk through to become the type of Christ follower that would be worthy of your love. That's just free today. That was not in my notes. I don't even see it. There it is again. <laughs> and I just got to say, the Holy Spirit will never, leave, will never lead you where the Word of God has not directed you. The second thing that you got to understand in this filter is, what are your people saying? Like, the Bible talks about godly counsel. In Proverbs 11 and 14, where there is no counsel, people fail. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And so, you know, using wisdom, when you want to bounce something off of somebody, make sure that that person is a mature Christian. Make sure that that person has a walk with God that is authentic and real. doesn't mean anybody's perfect. But you can't just go to your girls and your boys, and they're not trying to live for God and ask them. They don't know the word themselves and ask them for counsel. You're trying to hear from God. Like, if you just want confirmation bias, you can go to whoever you want to go to. But if you want to discern, is God speaking to me about this? then there's a certain group of people you cannot go to. And there's another group of people that you want to look at, someone that is mature, someone's walk that you can look at and say, I admire their walk. They're walking closely with the Lord, and you want to get godly counsel from them. I'm going to tell you again, like I said early on, if it wasn't for my pastor's godly counsel, I would have ended up marrying somebody that should have never been my wife, but because of his counsel, and not only his counsel, by my willingness to listen. That opened the door for me to be with my dream girl, the lover of my life, the love of my life for the past 20 years. I would have missed that if it wasn't for godly counsel. <laughs> I sure would have. I sure would have. I don't even want to imagine what it would have been like. I'm just going to, I just stay in what I have now. Thank you, Lord. And the last filter is their peace. And, and, and peace is, it's like velvet peace. It's like a peace that like, it's like all hell could be breaking loose on the outside. But on the inside, you have a peace that passes all understanding. There is, you sleep and rest at night because of this peace that's on you. And when God speaks to you, you God's, God's voice will be accompanied by a sense of peace after he speaks. Colossians 3, 15 says it like this in the Amplified. And let the peace, the soul harmony, which comes from Christ's rule, act as an umpire continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with, all, with finality all the questions that arise in your mind. So that peace is like an umpire saying, foul, fair, good, bad. And when I allow that peace to help guide my decisions, God is walking me into his purpose. I'll tell you this. Those of us that have ever experienced that peace, that real peace, you know what it's like when it's gone. And when that peace is gone, that means stop, halt, quit. See, for me, when I, would, when I didn't have that peace, I was still moving ahead because I'm just hard-headed, y'all, for real. That's just the way I'm wired. God knows me. But, man, as I matured, that peace guides my decisions. And you know when there's an unsettledness in your soul. That's just, man, and I'll tell you, bring it into more practical matters. Something just doesn't feel right about this. I can't even put my hand on it. I can't, I don't even know why it doesn't feel right. But something just doesn't feel right. That is a sign that the Holy Spirit has removed the peace. And he's saying, pause, wait, don't move forward. Don't say yes. Don't sign that contract. And when I learn to let that peace be an umpire, I get to walk in what God has for me, and I can hear his voice. And then the last thought of my questions is, okay, now that I've figured out who it is, and I've spent time confirming what he's really saying, and I've gotten confirmation 
from those that are mature, now I can start thinking about, so what should I really do? What should I really do? And I want to say this part as I prepare to close. There are decisions that you will make in the immediate that doesn't always go through all these filters. Time doesn't allow it all the time. But in my big decisions, I use all of these filters because it helps me. But there are moments when the Holy Spirit speaks, and if it is not earth-shattering or, or, or you perceive it to be this huge decision like quitting your job or walking away from something, there are times when the Holy Spirit speaks to you in a moment, and the risk is low except for embarrassment. Because there are times when he'll walk or he'll come to you and say, I want you to go tell that person that Jesus loves them. And you're like, but what if they slap me or what if they do this? The risk is low. And so he's wanting to use you to get to them and to speak that love to them. But there was a story for me years ago. I was I had this van that I really liked. And Angie and I were dating during this time. And the Holy Spirit, while I'm getting gas on a Saturday, tugs my heart and says, pray over your van. And so I stand at the edge of the van, and kind of like, because there's a bunch of people at the gas station. And so I'm like, kind of standing here, and I'm wondering, is this God? Is this just me? Why would God ask me to pray over my van? That just doesn't make sense. And so I'm standing in this corner. He says, no, walk around the van and pray in the Spirit. And I'm like, well... And I, really, because now, you know, my van took about $40 to fill up. So I'm probably at about $15 right now. And I'm just talking to the, the, internally. It's like, this don't make sense. And now I'm at $20 and I'm getting $25 and I'm still debating. And all of a sudden, I was like, I'm just going to do it. And so I'm walking around the van and I'm praying in the spirit. And people are looking at me, I'm stepping over the gas thing and I'm just walking <laughs> Because he said, pray over the whole van. So I'm praying over the entire van. And I remember getting in my van, and I'm just like, I don't even understand why we just did that. But I wanted to be obedient. The next morning, my brother and I were on our way to service, and it was a cold day, and there was ice. And I remember hitting this curve. I remember making this turn, and my car hit a patch of ice, hit the curve, and flipped over three times. And as it flipped three times, I'm just like, it's, it's like a movie. It feels like it's happening in fast motion, slow motion, all of that. But we had our seatbelts on, and we didn't have a scratch on us. And as I stood, my brother and I stood outside the van, people were coming by, and this one lady stopped, because I called Angie to come pick us up. So one lady stopped and said, you were in that? And I was like, yeah. I said, God is good, isn't he? Because she looked, and we're not laying on the ground. Because if you look at the van, we should have been laid out or something. Yeah. Yeah. But there was nothing. I said, Angie, Angie's like, do you want to go home? I said, no, I want to go to church. Yeah. And I remember. I remember that morning getting to church and just praising God. Like I never praised I remember yelling at the top of my lungs. These are all uncharacteristic things. But I'm yelling at the top of my lungs, thank you, I trust you. And I'll never forget the Holy Spirit saying, as I quieted down, that's why I told you. To pray over the man yesterday. Because God's voice is a protector. It's a provider. It's a healer. It's a way maker. He's a miracle worker, and he's working all of these things for our good. God's voice wants to give you your best life, wants to give you the optimal output for who he's created you to be. And he said, if you would listen to my voice and obey it, you will do great exploits. You'll walk into things you never thought you would walk into, have things you never thought you could have if you would listen to my voice and all I have to say today is God help us to discern when you are speaking so we don't miss it if I were to hand this mic out around this room I know that there are people who took a word from God 
acted on that word from God, and it changed everything. Everything. But we have to get rid of the noise. We have to get rid of all the noise. And if you're in a season, you're like, God, I, I just, I need, I, I want to hear your voice. I need to, I need, I got a decision to make and I need to hear you clearly, God. Help me. If that's you, I just want you to stand up just, just for a moment. I didn't do this in first service. It's just something that came to me now. It's like, God, I, I, I need to hear what I need to do. And God, I Help me to crowd out the noise. Help me to crowd out all the, my God, look around. I just want you to take a moment and look around this room. Look around this room. You are not the only one that needs to hear a word from God. And let me tell you, God wants to speak. He wants to speak, but we got to position ourselves to hear. And so, Father, today, we come before you. Humble, not knowing what to do. We believe your word that you want to speak to us. So, Father, today, move all the noise. Show me the areas in my life today where it's so busy and so noisy that I don't make time to hear what you have to say. Today, God, I tune my heart to you. You said, trust in me with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. Acknowledge in all my ways and you would direct and make straight and plain my path. You said, he who has listening ears, let him hear. Today, that's us, God. And by faith, we receive instruction, we receive direction, we receive revelation, interpretation, confirmation, and how to apply it in our lives. And today, God, I believe that because of what you're speaking, somebody is about to avert disaster. That the, that the scheme that the enemy designed by speaking the words to your mind that would destroy you today, that has been thwarted. And I declare victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give God praise? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hey, make some noise for that word. And such a good word. Thank such you. a good word. Thank you, Cousin Tony. Hey, we're going to get you out here in the next 60 seconds or so. Number one, at any time during this message or this service uh, where a thought came to mind, it's like, you know what? I want to get to know that person named Jesus. Um, we got a room full of believers that can make some noise and say, that's the best decision that we've ever made. And we want to welcome you home to the family. So it's a QR code that's popping here up on the screen. Go and scan it. Or if you want to talk to someone in person, we got a big sign in the back that says, I say yes to Jesus. We would love to tell you about those next steps. Hey, can we give it up to our first time guests one more time? Hey, thank you all so, so, so much for kicking it with us. We would love to meet you right outside these doors. Uh, for all those that need prayer, we have our prayer team be here, right here at the foot of the stage, right after service, if you're in need of prayer. Uh, somebody say next steps. Next Steps, just one quick promotion. Uh, Next Steps, uh, we have an opportunity uh, for us to not just lead people to know Christ, but make him known. One many ways is by joining the serve team. Uh, we have gifts, we have skill set, we have abilities that God has placed inside of us and a strong desire to help be a blessing to someone else. So there is space for you. There is a place for you to belong on our serve team, whether it's ushers, greeters, production, worship team, no matter what where it is, there is space for you. So you can go to weareanthemchurch.com forward slash serve and you can sign up right there. All right, we're going to pray and send you guys out with a blessing. Uh, we're so excited. Again, let's make some noise for the hamsters as they welcome Jackson into the world. We love you guys, hamsters, and we're praying for you. Can't wait to see you get back. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you so much for today and ministering to our hearts. We thank you for silencing all of the voices so we could truly hear from you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you that velvet peace. In Jesus' name we pray.
Now, Anthem Church family, we send you out of this place to lead people to know Christ and make him known. Amen. You guys have a phenomenal day, and see you real soon.